Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. The news about that FBI dossier talking about faithful Catholics being terror threats and naming church militant, it's like the gift that just keeps on giving. The other day, a reporter here in Michigan called and asked to interview me on the subject of Christian nationalism, which I agreed to. He said he was trying to better understand what Christian nationalism was or is, and since I had been interviewed earlier on the subject, he wanted to get inside my head, his words, and learn about it. Of course, all this talk about church militant, as well as others, being domestic white terrorist nationalist extremist Christians, there, did I cover every possible permutation? It's completely insane. These adjectives are thrown around in possible combination, every possible combination you can think of. White, terrorist, extremists, nationalist, domestic, Christians, and a hundred other combos. What it shows more than any other threat is just how idiotic and propagandist the people conflating all these things are. If you take those six adjectives, Christian, terrorist, extreme, white, domestic, and nationalist, and arrange them in all kinds of various combos, you get the entire crazy world of the lefties trying to label Christians, especially Catholics, as a threat to the established order, enemies of the state. And the combination can be whatever combo a given outlet or government agency wants it to be, because in the end, for them and multiple media allies, all that matters is that we are somehow portrayed as dangerous and violent. Never mind, it's not Catholics lopping the heads off hundreds of statues of saints across the country or defacing our own parishes with graffiti and sometimes setting them on fire or attacking pro-life pregnancy centers. What matters is that we are the enemy, period. And if they can't find an actual crime, like with the case of pro-life dad Mark Houck, then they'll just scramble the adjective list around and come up with a fresh label. When the reporter asked me what Christian nationalism is, I told him, a view of the nation and culture rooted in the Christian belief that all men are created equal and possess a certain dignity because they are created in the image and likeness of God. From that truth flows how laws should be constructed, how politics should be conducted, and how the natural moral law should be the basis for the governing of human affairs. He said, well, why does it have to be Christian? Why can't it be Hindu or Islamic? I kind of chuckled quietly to myself. Then I said, because neither of those belief systems subscribes to the natural moral law or the foundational truth that we are all made in the image and likeness of God and therefore cannot be treated with less dignity. Islam doesn't treat its women with the deserved dignity of being made in the image and likeness of God. And Hinduism has a caste system where those on the bottom, the untouchables, are viewed as practically less than human. And we might add, treated accordingly, in law. He appeared to have gotten that notion, yay, but then he moved on to the question of nationalism, saying, why would a nation have to be governed by Christian principles? I replied, because it is Christian, specifically Catholic teaching, that recognizes natural moral law as originating from God, as the standard in how we should relate to each other. We don't kill children in the womb. We don't subject the poor. We don't mutilate our children. We don't treat perverse sex as something protected in law and so on. We don't take away people's rights and means to defend their lives and their property, as well as the lives of others. As you might imagine, the questions included, oh, what about the Crusades and the death penalty? It always, always includes that. What's the point here? That is church militant. More and more is the one being sought out to explain these sorts of things, to be having uh, interviews conducted by the media with us. And what do we say? Western civilization was built by the Catholic Church, raised up from the ashes of the Roman Empire. We are the ones who converted and settled the marauding barbarian hordes, built an agricultural society, taught people to fend for themselves, developed hospitals and universities, and did every bit of it based on the underlying Christian worldview rooted in natural moral law that all men are created in the image and likeness of God. Heck, the understanding of natural moral law is so prima facie that even an atheist could accept it. In fact, in practice, most of them do. They just don't realize it because they haven't thought about it enough. Yet, just underneath the surface of all these interviews and articles and FBI notes and so forth, 
is the reality that Church Militant is on their radar, having established ourselves as the outfit for Catholic expounding on the political and social events of the day. Every article, every video, every mention raises our profile in their book as a legitimate threat to their worldview, a threat that sooner or later will have to be dealt with. Man, it is great to be in the fight. You got to get in the fight with us. You got to get in the fight. At one point, he said to me, well, what you seem to be painting is an us versus them mentality or scenario. I said, well, on the level of persons being made in the image and likeness of God, no, that's not true. But on the field of worldviews, absolutely. Although it's not something we're creating, it just is. That side, that ideology does not see all people as made in the image and likeness of God. We do, and thems are fighting words. So, you can see by the trend line here, just now, like we can, where all this is going. CM cannot be left alone, unattended, while we deconstruct their narrative about man, God, the universe, the body politic. Their narrative, their worldview is secular humanist, and that's on a good day, a world without God, ultimately atheist communism, and Church Milton is happy to be the lead enemy of the state, if that is their state. One that murders infants before they see their first sunrise, or butchers and mutilates young boys and girls, or submits them to unrelenting porn or drag shows. A state that applauds sodomy as marriage and allows perverts to pick which IVF baby they want to save and raise as their own child without a mother, while the other tiny humans are flushed down the toilet. It is a dark, monstrous worldview held by the opposing ideology and we are asking you now to support this Catholic apostolate in leading the charge against these evils. This is why we have begun our Dollar a Day campaign, asking you to please click on the provided link and commit to just $1 a day, 30 bucks a month, just a buck a day, to declare your support for our critical work here. What has arisen on the political and cultural scene is worldwide communism, back from its apparent defeat 30 years ago when the Soviet Union collapsed, back and stronger and even more formidable. Because it no longer paints itself as a threat to Christians and nationalism, but the natural outgrowth of care and compassion for humanity. That's bull. Nothing could be farther from the truth. The Great Reset is nothing less than the victory of worldwide communism ushered into the world and even parts of the church. No other apostolate, not a single one, is as well positioned as this one to lead that assault against these communists. We've never shied away from calling this what it is. From our very first beginning 17 years ago, we knew all of this and we were sounding the alarm back then. And now, as zero hour approaches, Church Militant must lead the charge because we are the only ones who have understood this from the beginning. It's why we need your support more than ever. Even when Mother Angelica used to ask her supporters to remember to slip their $25 for her efforts right in between their gas and electric bill. God bless Mother. The stakes have increased significantly since then. It costs a lot of money to run this apostle, but we think every dime spent here is worth it to ensure a smart, articulate voice is able to be raised against this Leviathan. And so we're calling on you, even in the tough economy, got it, believe me, to make the sacrifice and support us. And for those of you who already are, even just a little bit more. All we're asking you is to please give us just a dollar a day by clicking on the link and furthering your support for us in this fight against all of this. Join us in this fight. It really is about all of us, about the truth, about God, about the proper order of the universe. A dollar a day to fight communism and score victory for Holy Mother Church. What greater badge of honor could you take with you to your personal judgment besides telling our Lord you fought for his church when the chips were down, when you were labeled an enemy of the state? God love you. I'm Michael Boris.